everyone. This is Chaitali Bhatt from the European Bureau of Aviation and Defense Universe. Today, we have with us retired Major General Ashok Kumar, discussing with ADU the growing uh, global security concerns, resolutions, if any, and the reasons behind the Russian-Ukraine war, which is still going on, and why it is still going on. Welcome, sir. Welcome to the chat room. And today, to take the discussion ahead, we have Sangeeta Saxena, Editor, Aviation and Defense Universe. Welcome, ma'am. Thank you so much, Atali. And uh, welcome to ADU's chat room, Ashok, sir. Wonderful to have you here. Wonderful you, to have a systematic, uh, you know, uh, discussion on the whys and what and hows. And when I say how, I don't say how they are happening, but I mean how they will end. So, you know, this is the biggest crisis the world is facing since the World War II. And so I think it's just the right time for us to sit and discuss here at ADU that, uh, you know, how it is happening. Why did it happen? And uh, we want to begin with one factor, sir. Did you hope it will continue for so long? Uh, okay, I shall answer the uh, initial question in the end, you know, after we discuss the entire issue. Uh, okay. But I was quite sure uh, right from the beginning that the way USA and NATO are handling this issue of uh, Russian demands, it will result into the conflict. Whether it goes in the current form or it further expands, that is a matter of time which will unfold as we go ahead. So uh, let's start actually, uh, what is the root cause? you would have seen that large number of world leaders and other organizations have tried to persuade Russia, Ukraine, and other stakeholders to cease the hostilities and terminate the conflict because it has got wide-ranging implications, not only to the warring factions, but to the whole of the world. It's unprecedented, especially at a time when we have just been out from the corona pandemic implications. So let's uh, take me you to the uh, World War II commencement dates. And that is very important. I will not cover that much in detail. Uh, only the salient aspects which are going to contribute directly to the current crisis. Now, at the beginning of World War II, Rus that time Soviet Union and Germany, they were on the same side in 1939. In fact, uh, both of them attacked Poland together to start the conflict. However, it was in June uh, 1941 when the tables were turned when Hitler decided to attack his own ally, Soviet Union. Simultaneously, what was happening in the United States of America, it was sitting happily outside the conflict, not interested really. But then Japan did Pearl Harbor on the United States of America, and then America also became part of the Second World War. Finally, at the end of the World War II, once Germany was defeated, it was bifurcated in two parts, West Germany and East Germany. West Germany was aligned to the democratic form of government and it was with the Western values, whereas East Germany was with Soviet Union with communist system of governance. Now, thereafter, the uh, Cold War started, uh, uh, United States of America with uh, 11 additional member countries formed NATO in 1949, which was responded by Soviet Union by formation of uh, Warsaw Pact countries. And then they were engaging uh, with each other in different form the world over in different kind of contexts. But the real cause then starts in 1988. In 1988, what happened that Soviet Union started declining in its capacity and it further got aggravated. And in 1990, when East Germany and West Germany decided to unite, at this point of time, Soviet Union agreed for their unification. Uh, one must understand that this attempt to unify both the Germanys was already attempted number of times earlier, but every time it was crushed by the Red Army of the Soviet Union. But this time in 1990, it allowed it to happen, but with an assurance which was given by the United States of America and NATO and other stakeholders that NATO will not expand further eastwards from the Germany. It was this commitment on which Soviet Union had agreed for unification of Germany. 
and thereafter the warsaw pact also got dissolved in 1990 and finally soviet union got disintegrated in 1991 by the 1991 nato had expanded itself from 12 to 15 member nations now one was expecting that nato will not further expand however on one hand when soviet union was weakening uh, on economic grounds uh, political grounds influence wise so uh, rather than understanding that nato uh, did uh, everything countering uh, that situation and in that as against 15 member countries it took to 30 member countries as on date that is 200% increase in the member countries of nato and and another very important facet is that these additional 15 members were either part of the warsaw pact at certain point of time or were part of those 15 republics which got broken after the soviet union got disintegrated uh, in 1991 so suffice here to say that nato rather than understanding the weakening of uh, soviet union in 1991 and culmination of cold war utilize this opportunity to further expand and incorporate fair number of the erstwhile soviet union states in its nato umbrella now even till that stage it was okay but the soviet union also uh, after disintegrating aggression uh, you know russia became its you know major country and uh, russia also uh, places itself as a kind of uh, uh, what you call it uh, the one who is going to reclaim the soviet uh, union in its erstwhile form right and putin took to power in 2000 and he has been in power in for last 22 years in those 22 years he has made a lot of effort to ensure that russia regains its capacity and uh, the other soviet union uh, countries which were broken down in 1991 either they become part of russia or they become uh, governed by those uh, governments which are pro russia now uh, with the expansion of nato Uh, Ukraine was the only country which was a physical gap between the NATO countries and Russia. Now, NATO uh, membership, you have to also see a, a special uh, phenomena which United States of America does, and that phenomena is, except uh, making them the member, it physically de de deploys nukes and conventional forces in the member countries. Uh, as on date united states of america has deployed uh, more than 150 nukes and more than 90000 troops on the member countries in europe itself so once uh, this borderland ukraine also means the borderland if ukraine was to become member of nato it was well within the rights of united states of america to deploy nukes as well as conventional forces in ukraine and thus bringing the entire conflict at the doorstep of russia a situation which no sensible country will ever uh, agree to even if let's say some uh, sometime you know this kind of thing happens let's say china deploys uh, you know its troops and nukes in nepal do you think that we are going to accept it naturally and you know just uh, brush it aside that nepal is a sovereign country and it can decide anything what way it feels like it doesn't happen that way because your freedom remains only till the time it doesn't touch my nose so by uh, nearly agreeing to include ukraine in the nato united states of america and nato came to the doorstep of uh, russia now ma'am if you really see what russia did it had placed only two simple demands one was that ukraine should not become part of nato and second nato should reduce its deployment at least in the east european countries both the demands in really uh, if you analyze were on nato and not on ukraine because ukraine cannot join nato unless nato admits it so uh, rather than ukraine having said that okay he will not join nato you know unless nato accepts that Uh, the the entire conflict would have uh, become uh, meaningless there was no reason then for russia to intervene in ukraine at all but rather than that happening for what would be the inputs zelensky uh, got from united states of america and nato uh, he never uh, moved on those lines the on the red line concerns and usa made ukraine a scapegoat 
in this current conflict. In fact, USA, USA is also now trying to enlarge the conflict, wherein it has said to Poland that you give your MiG-29 jets to Ukraine and we will replace your kitty by F-16 jets. And now once that happens, it means the uh, Poland will also get in the similar way, but with a different connotation. And what is that different connotation? The different connotation is Poland is already member of NATO from 1999. And if they are after the Russia and Poland get uh, involved in kind of conflict, it will then spread to the whole of NATO and to the whole of the world. Now, I shall leave it you know, at this point of fear, but we have to look at what are the permanent solutions. Now, I, I will suggest and discuss uh, four options. Uh, each have got its own uh, implications and it will require a statesmanship to adopt one or the mix of these options. Now, first option is that USA and NATO agree to their commitment given to us by Soviet Union in 1990 at the time of unification of West Germany and East Germany. That is to say, they limit their NATO membership to 1990-91 timeline of only 15 countries and do not allow other countries which are NATO members to remain as NATO members. Whereas these members can continue to have their own army based on their individual security concerns. Uh, though it could have been an ideal solution, but this is something which uh, uh, has got almost uh, negligible chance of you know, happening, uh, really speaking. Now, the second option is a variation of this first option, wherein uh, USA and NATO continues to have the current membership of 30 countries, but while they can uh, continue deploying their troops and nukes in the first 15 countries, balance 15 which they have expanded, at least they don't have a physical deployment there and only come to their rescue if they are under any kind of threat. This is also doable, but again, uh, uh, the way we see United States of America trying to sort out the world in some manner, it is also less likely to happen. Now, coming to the third issue, which has been also educated by uh, some of the analysts, that is dividing the Ukraine in two parts along the Dnieper River, wherein it becomes West Ukraine and East Ukraine. Uh, while uh, West Ukraine can be on the lines of West Germany with the West, and East Ukraine can be on the lines of East Germany with uh, Russia. Now, I for one uh, will not recommend this option because it is uh, in a way recommending breaking of a nation into two, and, and that's not a fair one. So thereafter, I come to the uh, fourth option, and to my mind, it is something uh, doable. And that option is that there is appropriate level talks between Ukraine and Russia. The delegation level talks have not yielded much results. On Thursday, there is a meeting at the secretary uh, level at diplomatic level, uh, which has been planned. It will be worthwhile even to have the uh, meeting between the presidents of both the countries during which Ukraine must announce in categorical terms that it will not repeat, not join NATO. You will agree that when uh, Soviet Union uh, broke up, Ukraine was the second largest country uh, after Russia. And it has large number of nuclear weapons with this. But then there was a meeting in Budapest in 1994 and uh, United States of America, United Kingdom and uh, Russia gave a commitment to Ukraine that once he hands over his uh, nuclear weapons to Russia, they will ensure that it remains secure. So once the uh, president of Ukraine makes this commitment that he will not join uh, NATO, and then it becomes binding on everybody else to ensure that the security of Ukraine is guaranteed. And balance issues are peripheral. I'm sure once the prime issue is agreed by Ukraine, which he should not delay, uh, otherwise there is catastrophic losses of human lives which are already uh, happening or will happen more in due course of time. Uh, we should announce that. And so that the ball per se goes in the NATO court and how the whole thing unfolds. Uh, to my mind, this is something which uh, should happen and must happen. Otherwise, Russian interest will not get served and it may not uh, halt war uh, despite whatever we uh, think about. Right, sir. Sir, actually, you've talked about Russian concerns. You've talked about uh, NATO. You've talked about uh, Ukrainian concerns. My point at this stage of the discussion would be 
that uh, we agree to what uh, is, you know, whatever is there theoretically is there. But then what has happened is a absolute life situation. And in such a situation, sir, what, how do we expect this thing to come to an end? Do you see a point where the two come and meet? I don't see a point where two come and meet. So is there, is there something more to what we are not seeing, which you are seeing as an analyst, that there could be a point where two come and meet? What would that situation be? What, what would Ukraine have to commit to Russia in such a situation, sir? Well, uh, if you uh, analyze the three round of talks which have happened between Ukraine and Russia, in the first round of talks, both of them operated from their maximalist position. What Russia told Ukraine to uh, do the surrender, to uh, give recognition to uh, Crimea from its own side, give re recognition to two independent states of the Donbass region, and not uh, commitment not to join NATO. That was the maximalist position which came from uh, Russia. On the other hand, Ukraine was no less. It also uh, said that the uh, Russia must withdraw or the people who have already moved in, they must surrender. And it told that the Russia must withdraw from Crimea and Russia should also not give any support to the two independent regions of uh, Donbass. And uh, also since it is an independent country, and sovereign country and therefore no restriction or condition should be imposed for it to join NATO or otherwise. So both were operating from the maximalist side. So naturally nothing was to happen. But the good thing was that they agreed for the second round in a very short span of time. Now this time the gap did shrink a little bit, but still the both the countries were operating uh, from a position where there was no meeting point really speaking. And on ground also, uh, Ukraine, despite being relatively weaker, was also uh, enhancing the conflict uh, level at every stage. It, it you know, applied for joining European Union. It talked about the uh, implication of the no-fly zone. Uh, it uh, uh, requested for the oil and gas imports to be uh, terminated and so number of other going to the International Court of Justice, human rights violations and things like that. But in the second round, that uh, talked about some kind of ceasefire for the humanitarian aid. Of course, it's, you know, uh, operative parameters were not decided. So once it was implemented partially, it didn't, you know, stand a chance. But in the third round again, which happened uh, yesterday, uh, they agreed to the some parameter of humanitarian assistance. Uh, this time it was limited to uh, the people of India and other nationals who are, you know, currently bogged down in Ukraine and also to the Ukrainian civilian population. Of course, in this also, there was a difference of opinion, which continues till date. Russia was keen that all these people come out uh, either from the Russian border or from the Belarusian border. Whereas Ukraine was insisting that all of them should go back from the Western border, despite all the, you know, long distances. So uh, it has commenced the, this thing ceasefire, but the meeting ground per se is not, you know, visible anywhere. I for one fail to understand that what will Ukraine lose in the case, it says that uh, as far as he is concerned, he is not going, going to join NATO. And thereafter, the Russia should withdraw. And all other issues should be talked about and negotiated in due course of time. I think even Russia will look at an exit option, which is honorable at this point of time. And this is, you know, this must be done by uh, Ukraine without any loss of time. So, sir, which means that the first step has to be from Ukraine. Absolutely, absolutely. And uh, sir, keeping this in mind that it has requested for a European Union uh, membership to which there's no answer. It requested for a space, which again, there is no answer. And then it requested for, a, you know, uh, when I say space, I mean the airspace, for which there's no answer. And uh, no answer in the positive. So we've got a very clear cut answer from NATO saying that no, they will not. So, uh, it is a situation. In fact, fact ma'am, if you really see, uh, before the commencement of operations itself, there was a clear cut statement by the Secretary General of NATO saying that the NATO will not repeat, will not put its troops in Ukraine to fight Russians. 
बिकॉज एज ऑन डेट यूक्रेन इज नॉट मेंबर ऑफ नॉटो सो जेलेंस्की शुड हैव बीन वेरी क्लियर दैट द एड विल ओनली कम इन फॉर्म ऑफ वेपन्स इन टर्म्स ऑफ इकोनॉमिक्स इन टर्म्स ऑफ द सैंक्शंस एंड थिंग्स लाइक दैट व्हिच आर हैपनिंग बट विथ दैट वेदर ही इज गोइंग टू बी एबल टू फाइट रशियंस एंड सेव इट्स कंट्री फ्रॉम द इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चरल डैमेज एंड द लॉस ऑफ सिविलियन लाइफ्स और ही मेक्स अ पॉजिटिव शिफ्ट because if he accepts that he is not going to join nato i for one don't feel that what he is going to lose in this and balance things in any case is russian uh, uh, issues are with the nato not with the uh, ukraine as such but more you delay you then countries start uh, strengthening their you know position and reconciliation becomes that much difficult and that is how the ukraine and russia are moving currently in that particular direction right sir and uh, sir when we uh, talk of this we also have one very, very major factor in mind that the war could be geographically limited but uh, as far as the geopolitical co- connotations and repercussions of the war are there they are global absolutely so we have every country every uh, every uh, part of the world you know having its fears now uh, we in this part of the world where we have the indian subcontinent and we have our neighbors in the north so what what sort of a repercussion would you see from this war for india from china pakistan this side of the world okay uh, this is very important question actually this is what uh, which must concern us the most of course uh, unethical and so number of other uh, grounds we can discuss uh, russia and ukraine till the time cows who come home but the core issue is how does it affect india now there are two kind of effects one is when pakistan and china haven't joined in any activity against india then it will remain uh, predominantly to the economic conditions you know the well uh, the india imports lot of its energy requirements uh, crude oil which is already reached to the unprecedented level of you no know, 138 uh, dollars a barrel similarly the rupee has become very weak against dollar uh, there have been uh, major crashes in the uh, bsc and the nsc and all other supplies are going to shrink are going to become costly militarily speaking it is going to be pretty difficult for us because 50% plus equipment of our armed forces are ex russian origin now uh, once this fight is on despite what our best russia does the production lines supply lines payment lines everything will get disrupted to what extent that will be known you know depending on in what form till how long this war goes but that is going to create a problem now as far as china is concerned to my mind at this juncture china will not jump into the war either on taiwan or with india till the time united states of america and nato don't join this conflict physically but if this escalation results in a situation that united states of america and nato get deployed physically in fighting russia and ukraine that will be the day where china is sure to launch operations for integration of taiwan because what has emerged despite all kind of forward and other groupings and nobody comes to the rescue of other country and you have to fight your own battles on your own uh, but uh, uh, it will it will still be little away but this possibility in the indian security calculus should not be ruled out and the moment china does anything kind of that naturally it will not li- uh, uh, leave india scot free he can conduct operations in eastern ladakh less on eastern ladakh he can do it in arunachal pradesh also in a big way and once anything is done by china pakistan in any case is you know uh, assured uh, country to jump into the bandwagon but let's hope good sense prevails between uh, russia and ukraine and uh, they come to the uh, some kind of agreed settlement in early time frame and thereafter the world also understands the uh, losses and miseries of the whole world and uh, the, the economic uh, conditions and the difficulties of you know uh, life they are also minimized but even if it is closing ma'am today still it will have its scars on the economy of the world including india in a substantial way that is my take on the issue right sir and sir uh, as we will proceed with india in focus uh there has been a lot of discussion ample criticism ample support 
to the fact that India abstained from the voting. And in the United Nations, it did it got very less friends for that and a very major uh, chunk of, uh, you know, ill will for the stand it took. What do you talk about this stance? What is your focus? Uh, I, I think uh, uh, the, the current conflict did not leave India with any other option. This was the only option and best option for India at this juncture. Because on one hand, that he is member of Quad and everybody is trying to gravitate against China. And because of that, it should be part of United States of America's game plan. That is the uh, majority of the countries are thinking that way. But we have to also think of our relationship with uh, Russia, which has been unprecedented in the post-independent history of India. It was uh, Russia which has used its veto power whenever it was needed by India. It was Russia when in 1971, of course, that time the Soviet Union came to the rescue of uh, India in uh, Bangladesh Liberation War, while the uh, United States of America and UK were sending their fleets uh, in the Indian Ocean. So, uh, and even in the current time, uh, despite uh, enhancing Russia-China relationship and Russia-Pakistan relationship, Russia still remains a most trusted country as far as India is concerned. I, for one, have not found a single occasion in the entire history of post-independent India where Russia has not been on the side of India. And therefore, India cannot afford to let uh, Russia be lost off from that you know, relationship and you know, uh, jump on the bandwagon of United States of America Whereas United States of America is a nation, if you really see, they, they have a very, very uh, uh, duplicity in their character while dealing with various nations. They basically uh, use and throw uh, various countries, which they have done in a number of cases. So I think being a central point, not being uh, either towards America or towards Russia, and trying to bridge the gap by abstaining, I think this is the best uh, stance India has taken. And I will remind uh, your attention to the, uh, this kind of question was asked from the external affairs minister when he had gone uh, in Europe in a conference. And he had articulated this in an exceptional way. If you really see in 1962, uh, uh, China attacked us. Where was the waste? Where was NATO was formed in 49? So in those 13 years, then uh, did NATO, did USA said that you are a democratic country and you are being attacked by so-and-so, so-and-so, and we are going to come to your rescue? nothing happened. So every nation has to be concerned about its national interest. The current national interest of India, to my mind, is to be in a manner so that it can calibrate its relationship both with the United States of America as well as Russia. And that is what exactly the country is trying to attempt. Right, sir. Just the right point to end this discussion, sir. Thank you very much for being here with us. And it was very, very enlightening, very nicely put with everything put from A to Z in a very systematic much. way. So, the you know, when our audience listens to it, they get a historical perspective as well as a current perspective, a focus point of view of India, a focus point of view of the world, NATO, why, European Union, why, why not to go to them. So I think so wonderfully explained very grateful to you, sir, for having been on the show with us. And now we take you back to Cyprus, where Chitali is waiting for us. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you very much. As when we began the conversation, yes, uh, we said that you'll be giving, giving us the global perspective. Exactly what sir did. Yes. Uh, total global perspective of this war, how it is affecting everyone, how uh, things will change after the war ends. Thank you so much, sir, for your time today. And um, we look forward to have such discussions with you in future again thank you so much ma'am thanks again and have a Thanks great day ahead thank, thank you, you. thank you